on today's episode of Cheating When Love Lies. This episode's guest requires no introduction to anyone who's ever listened to a podcast because he is, in fact, podcast royalty. Adam Carolla came on to share his perspective on cheating and affairs. We talked about emotional versus physical affairs, what drives people to cheat, and what he might tell someone who's thinking about having an affair. One of my favorite moments was his answer to this. Adam, what could make a person that's been cheated on time after time finally decide they're just not going to take it anymore? I think it's more kind of about the person that's being cheated on and how they assess themselves and how they assess sort of their value. You can't take some young, beautiful woman and just ignore her for a year or whatever. She's going to go, I'll, I'll go test it out in the open market. Adam Carolla, thanks so much for coming on to Cheating When Love Lies. My pleasure. Thanks for the intro. I'd love to start by following up with something that I heard you and Dr. Drew talk about on the Adam and Dr. Drew show recently. It was about character. The two of you talked about what attributes represent good character and how to determine whether or not you have it. And I think character is such an important part of a discussion around cheating. Well, you know, it's interesting. I'm I'm very concerned slash obsessed with character in people. Mm -hmm. And it's a really important subject that I don't think we give enough time to, like as a society in general, Mm -hmm. you know, we talk a lot more about people being nice than people having character. Yes. And I would much rather have neighbors with character than neighbors who are nice. I... I am sure that I know what you mean, but can you clarify that with an example? I think that this, it's like the tyranny of niceness, right? Everything is about being nice. Everything's about being happy and nice. So I totally agree with you. But what would be an example of a, you know, integritous and neighbor versus a nice one? Well, first things first, nice can be cultivated, I think, as a as an overcompensation for a lack of character and other mm. important qualities, mm-hmm. like uh, think about the people you know who are overly nice. Mm-hmm. They're often the people that if you met them for dinner at seven o'clock, they would show up at seven forty and mm-hmm. then be really nice. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh my god, you look so good. If you lost weight, oh my god, this is so, this is so friendly. Like, oh, your hair looks great, or whatever it is. Yeah. But they're oftentimes the people that show up late or don't pay for the bill. Or so on and so forth, but they're nice, you know, and the mm-hmm. nice, you kind of wonder like, why are they being so nice? And I, I think of nice sometimes as overcompensation, like right. you should be, everyone should be cordial and right. friendly, but don't overdo it. I'd rather you be fair than the nice. And as far as the neighbor goes, uh, I mean, we all know what the nice neighbor is. That's the one who's always waving and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> right. by the way, you know, you can be nice and have character. Plenty right. of people do. Uh, but the character neighbor is sort of like you have the tree and the trees on your property, but it's growing on, you know, it's hanging over their property and you, you know, they go, we want it pruned because some of the leaves are getting into the pool. And then you say to them, you know, okay, why don't you pick out whoever's going to the arborist, whoever's yeah. going to go, yeah, yeah. you know, prune the tree. And, and, and when you get the bill, send it to me and we'll split it. We'll just yes. split the bill down the middle. Now that's character. Think, that's the character. Yeah. Okay. Where you go, just, we'll just split. Yeah. You know what okay. I mean? The, the nice person who doesn't have characters going like, well, it is your tree. And you know, you, they yeah. start negotiating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And character is a, it really keeps the world going around. It's what, it's what stops, you know, when, when that, when the nice neighbor walks their dog and their dog takes a dump on your lawn, they don't necessarily pick it up. The <laughs> right. character neighbor For, is, picks, picks it, it up. up. So He's, I'd rather have the neighbor who picked up the dog poop than the one who was waving, waving at me right. frantically when I'm coming home in the driveway. You said something else that was very interesting, that 
one can't self-assess having good character. Like, I can't say, well, you know, I'm a really good person, that it's the observer that determines whether or not you have good character. Did I get that right? Yeah, abso- absolutely. 100%. I feel like people decide they have good character and that isn't really for you to decide. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They, they've they decided that, and by the way, they all miscalculate grossly in their favor, in their mm. favor, right? Mm-hmm. Like they go, I have great character. It's like, you don't pay taxes. Right. I know, but I'm a good person. You know, right. it's like, You'd be sur- How many people just flat out you don't pay taxes and think they have great character? Right. Or people that say, I'm really honest. You know, that's a big one. Oh, and that's my really, God. Yeah, I'm, re- I'm, I'm honest. I'm going to be honest with you. It was funny. I saw a TED Talk about the, you know, these cops that sort of determine, what's it called, when they investigate in the room? And they're like, the number one red flag of someone that's not telling the truth is when they say, I'm honest, right? I'm being honest with you. So I agree with you that it isn't something that's necessarily self-determined, but determined by an observer. It's interesting. It's, it's the tell. Like, you should really ask yourself as a human being, like, how many times a week are you going, seriously, I mean it, or a true story, or I wouldn't yeah. lie. Like, people yeah. that don't lie never say I wouldn't lie. Yeah, yeah, or exactly, exactly. So can a cheater have good character? We've kind of talked about what good character is. Can you be a cheater and have good character? Well, let's uh, figure out what the cheating is. Like, is it on a marriage? Is it on a relationship that's a non-marriage, girlfriend, boyfriend, what have you? Any relationship where the people believe that they're committed. So you could be living together in a committed partnership. You could be married. But you have an understanding between you. You're for me and I'm for you. And one of them, let's say the woman, she cheats. She a bad character? Yeah. Um, I would say it's it's definitely a strike in the character (laughs) department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would also say that your character can't be completely and utterly defined by this part of life or that part of life or another Mm. part of life. So Mm -hmm. character is something that pervades all facets of life. So there's the character of being a good parent, Mm -hmm. you know, not being a hypocritical parent. Mm -hmm. There's the character of a neighbor. There's the character of a coworker, right? An employee, you know what I mean? Like employee, Mm -hmm. A, a boss, a, a mm. motorist when you're driving your car, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. A, con, a, a consumer, like I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, let's say your woman, the woman we're speaking about. Yeah. And she, she cheats. Yes. Well, you go, okay, well then that's a strike in the character department. But what if that person, that same woman doesn't cheat, but says, uh, I bought this really expensive gown to wear out on Friday night. And you go, God, that's a lot of money for a gown to wear one time. And then she goes, oh, no, I'm going to return it the next day. I'm just yeah. going to tell them it didn't fit right. You know, yeah. you go, OK, so now that's a character strike. Right. Right. And and now we're dealing with different realms like and and then is the person who returns the gown more likely to cheat <laughs> or is the cheater? You know, do we have chinks in the armor of character. You, right. you know what I mean? So I, I would say if in fact you cheated, mm-hmm. that's a character strike. But if in fact your character is very virtuous in every other okay. facet of life, mm-hmm. then you can still in the sum total have decent character. I think we all know though, the people who cheat, cheat, and then they cheat on their taxes and then they litter and then they return dresses mm-hmm. that they wore out once. So in general, I would look at it as, as a tell as a in tell. the character, de- in the character department, but although, not necessarily condemning them overall. It would be one of your kind of top three mm. kind of things that you looked at for someone's overall character. On the other hand, 
I would probably try to parse it out a little more like the dude on the business trip who hooked up with the chick he saw at the bar, mm-hmm. you know, at the hotel kind of mm-hmm. one and done, maybe, maybe a less of a strike than an ongoing relationship with somebody yes. else. You yes. Know. Well, to me, that's not an affair. That's a hookup. So I try and focus okay. on affairs as opposed to hookups, but I totally agree with you. Adam, what is cheating to you? Is it sexting? Is it going out for drinks after work with a hot colleague without telling your partner? What constitutes cheating for you? And now, a word from our sponsor. This is Watkins. Welcome with Bridget Pettisee. I love hearing people's stories of resilience and grit. This is why I created this podcast. We are very excited to welcome Jim Gaffigan, Yasmin Mohammed, Glenn Beck, Tim Dillon, Abigail Schreier, Jeff Garland, Ayan Hirsi Ali, Sam Harris, Heather Hying. Jonah Goldberg, Ben Shapiro, Glenn Greenwald, Sarah Shahi, Colin Quinn. If there's a culture of victimhood, then let's tell stories of grit and survival. Subscribe and listen now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, well, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know, the old senator said it when he was talking about pornography. Like, we'll know it when we see it. Hmm. You, know, you kind of have to <laughs> figure out it. what that dinner or that lunch meant or what those extra words in the text beyond the business of business may have may have meant. Um, I would say it is having th- the notion of of navigating more than one relationship simultaneously, whatever that other relationship was. And it couldn't be a friendship, but what I mean is, is we all know what it is to have two relationships, Mm -hmm. even if the other relationship is, Oh, we just go to lunch and she makes me feel attractive. So I still would kind of say that's another type of relationship. Really? Would you consider that an affair? A friend comes to you and says, you know, I love my wife. It's great. But there's this woman at work. We have lunch three times a week. I tell her really personal stuff. She makes me laugh. Is that guy having an affair? An emotional affair? Not in the court of law, but <laughs> there's I still think court of law. <laughs> there's, there's something going on in that relationship that he's currently in that's probably lacking if he feels like he needs to have this part of his life filled up Mm. in this other relationship. In your opinion, which is worse, an emotional affair, meaning there's no sex involved, or a physical affair, meaning that there is sex, even if it's not full-on intercourse, but there's naked people rolling around? I would say as a male, we definitely (laughs) lean more toward the physical part, Mm -hmm. and maybe women lean more toward the emotional part. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying I'm just like a, a male in that department that the physical part of it would be more bothersome. Really? Even if it didn't develop to full on intercourse? Just, you know, fooling around. Yeah, I mean, it, it would. It seems difficult to kind of parse out the rolling around naked versus intercourse <laughs> to me. I, I would just kind of go ahead and call that cheating. <laughs> okay. But, can... you know, I'm, I just have male wiring that that's a, that's just most yeah. males are wired that way, that the mm-hmm. physical part would be more bothersome than the emotional part. Okay. Is it possible in this day and age when we have so much access to other people? I mean, lift up your laptop and you've got access to 7 billion people on the planet. In these conditions, can men and women really remain faithful when there's so much opportunity? Yeah, I I, I think they can. I mean, um, I don't know. I'm, um, I don't know if we, I don't know, old fashioned, probably mm-hmm. not old fashioned because more guys probably had affairs back in the day, I guess. I don't know. For me, it's, it's not, never been an issue. It's not, it's not, I'm naive about it, I guess. Uh, but I think I think you can, yeah. Yeah, I, I heard um, your interview with Donny Osmond, and I heard you guys kind of riff on it a little bit, and Donny was like, yep, I mean, how long has he been married? He's a little older than I am. It's been a long time. And he was saying, never 
never stepped out. So it's possible. He got, he got married at 20, I believe. Yeah. yeah. He was telling 20. me in the interview. And, and uh, I believe he's like 63 now. Yeah. If memory serves. So 43 years, I guess, would be a long would be time. The time. For someone like you and he, who are both in the public eye, both recognizable, both desirable, um, not only by your personal attributes, but just by your sort of success and and stature in the world. And it, it's really admirable. And so I really enjoyed hearing him talk about how committed he was to the marriage. Yeah, I, I, it's I think, possible. I, I think if you're like Donnie and, and I know a lot of guys, Dr. Drew is this way. Mm-hmm. As, as well, which is like, um, he, uh, I don't think he has a choice in his mind. What do you mean? I don't think, I don't think it's an option. I, 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 I think, I think for guys like Donny Osmond and, and, or Dr. Drew uh-huh. and, and many guys, uh-huh. I, I, I don't think it's an option. It's just not an option. Because the guilt, the shame, the faith i mean maybe i think, in I think they would look at it as um you know for me uh, you know so you you think in life you think of those things where you go not an option like you go taking another human life correct it's not an option right stealing you know, i'm never gonna s- steal sexually touching a, an 11 year old oh, boy God. or something oh, it's like it's God. not an yeah. option no it's just not it doesn't enter your mind. You're not like trying to prevent yourself from doing it. It's, mm. it's not a thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, going into a store and stealing something. It's not an option for Dr. Drew. Right. Just, so he, and, and you can go, why not? Why mm. isn't, why is it an option? I, I don't know why it's not an option. It's, it seems like it's an option for quite a few people, but yes. for a lot of people putting your hands on a stranger, you know what I mean? Like, right. I got into an argument in the subway and I started trying to choke the person. Like, it's just not an option. Right. So you're saying that. Like, littering's not an option. Like, could Mm -hmm. you throw, you know, fast food wrappers out of your car when it was moving Mm -hmm. down the highway? No, no. It's just not an option. So, you know, you say, well, what do you mean not an option? I think it's the same, not an option. Okay. Do you think that men and women cheat at the same rate? I know the answer, but I'm just interested in... From a male perspective. You you know the statistics? Yes. The statistics, they do change rather rapidly, also depending on how you define cheating. But basically, yeah. I think women are probably catching up to men and maybe passing them. Bingo. You yeah. Yeah. It's just like college. Yeah. You know, there's more women in college now than there are men. Women yeah. are just... are. I, I think women, I think, you know, I wrote a book called in 50 years, we'll be chicks. I, I feel yes. like men are starting to become women and women are kind of becoming men. How do you feel about that? That bumps me out. It's a, uh, it's a kind of be careful what you ask for, you know, there are differences and, yes. and it, and it works out pretty well normally because what you're looking for is. You know, as a dude, I'm a very skilled carpenter mm-hmm. and I'm a skilled carpenter and I've okay. and I've been a skilled carpenter for a long time. And there was a situation recently where a a younger girl had gotten like locked into the bathroom at my house. Okay. And I won't get into all the nuts and the bolts, <laughs> but at some point it was No pun intended. Yeah, it was four moms and three daughters and one locked in the bathroom. Yeah. And at some point, everyone just looked at me and my <laughs> daughter just went, Dad, go down to the garage, go get your stuff and go pop the lock. Like, go undo the deadbolt. And I was yeah. like, all right. Right. And I had that skill. And right. no one else had that skill in that group. So it's kind of a good thing in this situation that somebody possessed that skill. Now, if we're all just sort of equally, you know, the same, then we may, we may not have had that person that possessed that skill. Now I don't possess other skills that they possess. Mm -hmm. So we could have been in another situation where we needed something else. 
Right. And then they could have stepped up. And that's kind of what you want in a society. Not everyone with the same skill set. Right. So that it's not a matter of being better. It's a matter of being different, that each person has their own lane. Yes. You talk very openly and persistently about the importance of fathers in the home. Can a man be a cheater and a great father? Yeah, until they find out he was cheating, you know, later on in life, and then they then they resent him. Um, it's a little it 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 it, it creates a strain because. Because think about all you have to do to cheat, right? You're not yes, coming home. It's a you're missing burner. a holiday, right? A calorie burner. Well, not um, only is it a calorie burner physically, like you're gone, you're yeah. hooking up, you're doing this, you're doing that. But you have to kind of think about the mental calories that are burnt when you're at home. You know what I mean? Knock on the door, phone rings. Somebody says, oh, so somebody came by looking for you. We don't know who that was. You know, <laughs> think about the distraction. Yeah. Maybe some men, you know, do it with a, a clean conscience. I have my mistress. I take care of my family. I'm there for my family. I provide for them. I, I go to the football game. I'm around. I just have this other person, this other relationship on the side. Am I a great father and a cheater? Is that possible? Kind of like what we were talking about before. Character and cheater. This is father and cheater. You're not there, man or woman. There's time spent with somebody else. Yeah, I would say that, first off, there's plenty of bad dads. You know, mm. I had a dad that was not a very present dad. He wasn't mm -hmm. cheating. He was just not not mm -hmm. engaged. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's mm. such a thing as having a dad that's not engaged, regardless of what the schedule is. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can just be emotionally not not engaged. Sure. I would argue that it would be very difficult to compartmentalize to the degree that you could have another relationship and still be, you know, sort of fully present with mm -hmm. your kid. Mm -hmm. Because let's just say, hey, it's Sunday, we're going to watch the ball game. And you got your phone next to you and it starts blowing up. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're going there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's where your, your brain is going. Mm -hmm. Think about how you are with your kids. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example. Let's just say somebody calls you boss, family member, something like that. And they go, right. hey, man, something came up pretty important. I need you to call me as soon as possible. Boom. You read that text. Yeah. Then you walk into the kitchen and your kid's there and he's like, what's for breakfast, mommy? What's for breakfast, daddy? Yeah. You go, oh, yeah. OK, let me uh, let me get you some cereal. You're not. What's your interaction with that kid like? Right. You're all that? fractured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you can you can pour the cereal and put the milk in it and slide it across the table and stuff. But and the kids going on about what Halloween costume right. they're thinking about next year and blah, blah, blah. And you're not really. You're not really there. Right. right? You're not fully I mean, you're engaged. Not, you're not engaged. So you're right. saying that if it's a lover who's blowing up your phone, you know, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to be thinking, well, what do they want? Are they angry? Do they want to see me? How do I get out of the house, et cetera? I'm not even seeing, I'm not saying that it is the lover blowing up your phone. I'm just saying mm. it's a low grade distraction. Mm -hmm. it's a low grade anxiety, you know, mm. think about, think about like the low grade anxiety of like masks in the last mm -hmm. year and a half, you know, you get out of your car, you start walking toward the <laughs> supermarket and you're like, Oh, oh shit, crap, my, mask. my mask, where's yeah. my, ma where's my right. mask. Yeah. And then this thing hits you like, Oh shit. Is there one in the car? Yeah. Oh, if I don't, do they hand them out here? Yeah. Or if they hand them out, how do I go in? I don't want to walk in. It, like it's just a low grade. It's always there kind of anxiety that proves to be a little bit of a distraction and kind of take away from your enjoyment in your relationships just a bit. Is it once a cheater, always a cheater? Or can you change? I don't, you know, I, I really can't speak to women hmm. or for women about this, but mm -hmm. men 
have a kind of a biology and the biology tends to oh. kick in effect and slow things down. It's like guys that did a lot of fighting in their twenties. They're not getting in a lot of scraps when they're 50, yeah. maybe more than the guy who never did, but it's always, it decreases. Like as you, as, as guy, guys kind of settle in. And I would say for men, there, there's definitely a biological component mm -hmm. at work here. And a guy who may have done, done a lot of bird dogging when he was 28, <laughs> oh, you yeah. get that guy after the divorce and he's 53 and you marry him. There's a good chance that guy could have sort of settled in and, he and is not physically going to go out and cheat anymore. Yeah, it's not the first time I've heard this. Actually, my very first episode, I had this guy, we called him Brad, and he was just a serial cheater. I mean, he he cheated on his honeymoon. It started on the honeymoon and just kept going and going and going. And now, you know, he divorced the wife. And now he's, you know, early 60s, 59. He's like, biologically, just can't do it anymore. I just calm down. Something happened and I just calm down. I don't have the desire. I don't have the need. And were it not for the biology, I think I would still be the guy that I was when I was 30. So mm -hmm. he totally agrees with your point of view. Well, there is a, you know, imperative biologically. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's something that's kicking in. I mean, <laughs> or not kicking in <laughs> or not kicking in. That's right. Maybe yeah. got kicked out. Um, what could make someone who's been cheated on? finally decide they're not going to accept it anymore. I mean, I think we're probably around the same age. People that, you know, they've, let's make it the woman who's a cheater. And the guy's like, I forgave her the first time, I forgave her the second time. What is it that can make someone finally say, no more, I am not putting up with this crap anymore? What is it? Um, I, I, it probably has more to do with the person who's not cheating than the person that is cheating. Oh, what do you mean? I think, I think a lot of your decisions in relationships are made based on your lot in life and how you feel about yourself and your options and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. I, I don't think they are dramatically different than a work environment. Mm. If you, you have people when people are really highly skilled, mm -hmm. they're, they're sought after. Yes. And, and, and they understand the open market and they understand they have skill sets. And mm -hmm. if their boss is mistreating them, being a douche, whatever, yeah. people don't usually hang around that long. The people that really have somewhere, the, the people who would be welcome, right. at least in their mind, at another place of employment. They just don't put up with it. So and you're saying it's the same with that betrayed partner. I They're do. Just, mm, I do. Okay. I think people feel like if you feel like you're desirable and you have a lot to offer mm. and you you know, you can contribute to a relationship and you're a good partner and you're attractive and mm. so on and so forth, you don't hang out that long. Mm. Now, all those things may be true, but you may not feel that way. And then you'll hang out. Right. But most of the people understand if they're attractive, they're attractive, or if they're desirable, they're desirable, or if they're a good person, or they have that skill set, just like we spoke about at work, they get it. They understand it. They understand there's a kind of open market version of relationships. Right. They understand their value. Yeah, you you yeah. can't you can't take some young beautiful woman and just ignore her for a year or whatever. She's going to go I'll I'll go test it out in the open market. Okay. Right. I mean they they're aware of that. So I think I think it's more kind of about the person that's being cheated on and how they assess themselves and how they assess sort of their value mm -hmm. on the open market. Mhm. Mm uh, you do hear a lot of stories about people, you know, starting a new career or losing a lot of weight or doing some sort of dramatic life transformation that enables them to leave. Right. There's something yeah. going to. I Yeah. I, I moved someplace new or I met someone else, some sort of dramatic change. 
Well, I mean, let's let's put it to you this way. Okay. Just to go with a an extreme point here. Okay. Um, let's just say you're in a relationship and let's just say not married just because I, I don't want to deal with the legalities of divorce. Okay. Wait, how old am I? Well, let's just say you and I are in a relationship and uh, let's just make ourselves uh, 30 yeah, and, I like not, it. and not married. <laughs> okay. You don't want me to go up to 67? I'm, I'm 30. You're, you're 38. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's 30. Our, okay. in our 30s. We're having this relationship, right? Okay. Now, and I'm a, I'm a carpenter. Okay. And, um, you know, like I was in my old life, I'm driving my pickup truck and I'm, you know, making 18 bucks an hour. What am and I? And you're, uh, you know, you're a school teacher. Okay. You're doing okay. I'm doing okay. You know, we both make 47 grand a year. Okay. And you're, uh, you're attractive as you are. Oh, thank you. And you go out and, and you're having affairs on me. Okay. Right. And, and I'm aware of it. Yes. Uh, but maybe I'm not squeezing the trigger on getting out of the relationship because I got a pickup truck. I'm swinging a hammer for a living. <laughs> right. You're pretty, you're attractive. You know, am I going to do? Well, let's just say the following day, I win the lottery and win $100 million. I'm never giving you a divorce. <laughs> uh, we're not You're married. Going, oh, I should have married you in the beginning. The point is this. How many people, male or female, with the cheating partner, if yeah. they hit that lottery for $100 million bucks, wouldn't be gone the next day? Next and day, the next minute. All right, next minute. So the answer is all of them. So then right. how much of it is about the other person? Yeah. You look at it with that extreme example. Yeah. Yes. Well, then there's also the children factor, right? People will also stay. Oh, yeah. You were saying we're single. Oh, yeah. You know, no kids, no marriage. Right. Okay. I don't have to split half my lottery <laughs> right. winnings with you or whatever. Okay. I'm really sorry, by the way, that I cheated on you. I hope you forgive me. <laughs> um, All right. Uh, what, advice, <laughs> what advice would you give to a male or female friend who came to you and said, Adam, I'm thinking about cheating. You know, I love my spouse. I love my partner. But there's person and they're just, I think they're my soulmate. What should I do? You know, I, it's kind of like. Dr. Drew and I used to talk about this a lot where people mm. were, were sort of like, oh, we're thinking about inviting a third person into the bedroom. I'm oh, always like, no. it's, it's over, man. Yeah, it's, it's somebody's going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And they're always like, oh, no, it's just fun and we want to experiment. It's like, no, no, it, it, it's over. But so Adam, if, that's mm. different because you're inviting them in. This is a secret. Like this person, you're never going to know. Well supposedly they're not saying right. let's invite a third person in. they're saying i'm going to take them off to malibu or whatever you know wherever you go in california and we're gonna we're gonna kick it what would you recommend to them not well i i you know what i would say is look if you think this person's your soulmate then it's it's time to tell your partner okay you know, you're moving on if okay. you're just attractive attracted to this person and you want right. to blow off some steam you know, have at it, but keep in mind, it's going to kind of, you're going to have to deal with it. Like it's going to haunt you. You're going to be thinking about it. And I don't mean Dorian Gray or sort of, <laughs> or, I don't mean the picture of Dorian Gray. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't mean the Raven, you know, with the body, Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, sort of like, you know, the phone's going to ring. You just got, you're, you're going to hear a lot of stuff. You know, you just, I mean, think about all the stuff you might hear where it's like somebody came by today, you know, like who, like right. when you don't cheat, that doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. right? When you mm -hmm. do cheat, somebody came by today is a big, big deal, right. right? Yeah. So it sounds like your advice would be if it's your soulmate, leave, tell your mm -hmm. partner. If it's just, you know, you want to blow off some steam you know, good luck to you, more power to you, but be careful. What if it's somewhere in the middle? Like, I, I really like her, but I know I don't want to leave my wife or my husband. No one's ever going to find out. I just need to, to, I need to feel young again. I need to feel a thrill again. What should I do, Adam? Well, you know, 
I'm no moral arbiter of, of anything. You know, if, <laughs> if I, I am saying uh, I have found through my experience in life, mm-hmm. there are a lot of things that you may think are a good idea in the moment that you mm-hmm. probably mm-hmm. might regret down mm-hmm. the road. Mm-hmm. And I would definitely factor that in before I undid my belt. But if it's something you feel strongly about, who am I to who am I to judge? Okay. Do you have stories of people who worked it out after an affair or a couple that tried to fix their marriage after an affair but couldn't? Do you have either one of those examples? All I got is Will and Jada. No. Well, That's I don't even I know got. where they are right now. I don't know. Uh I I have heard many cases that that work that way. Um which way? Where they couldn't I mean, forgive that they, or... they worked they worked it out. They worked I've it out. Heard of heard of that. It it just doesn't seem like a high probability, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess they talk about certain forgive things me. in a relationship like the death of a child. Oh that gosh. M- it sounds extreme, but yeah. that leads to a lot of divorce, you know, like this yeah. is the stress of that, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. this feels statistically like that, you know, hard to survive after this death, which is essentially the cheating. The death of I mean? the marriage. Yeah. Faith yeah. can't fix it. Family unity can't fix it. Yeah, Just everything's everything's, everything's possible, mm-hmm. but you you really need two people who are committed to moving forward and, you know, feels like that should be done in some therapeutic setting. Mm -hmm. Is there anything worse in a marriage than cheating? Anything that could be more hurtful than that, whether the cheating is physical or emotional? Um, well, yeah, I, I would say because, Oh, what is it? What's worse than cheating? Well, it kind of, I mean, let's, uh, Let's see if we can explore this. Yeah. I think if you said to, you know, to most people, look, there's a lot of bad husbands, a lot of bad wives, you know, yeah. a lot of they're in a, unattentive and they're not focused and they don't you know, validate they watch, you. Mm-hmm. They don't validate you and they watch too much TV and they ignore you and they X, Y, and Z or there's, there's duties, you know what I mean? There's mm-hmm. responsibilities that, each side has to take over, whether it's a traditional pick a lock in a bathroom like me or, <laughs> yeah. you know, cook, cook breakfast for the kids. I mean, there's a lot of nuts and bolts and kind of work day right. in and day out, you know, as right. a couple. Deliverables. Yeah. Things you have the to deliverables. do. Deliverables. Okay. Right. <laughs> so if you said to most people, I'm going to give you a choice. You can have a husband and or wife, just two way street of the person being a little lethargic, being a little depressed, maybe Mm. has a habit or two you're not Mm. quite fond of, maybe likes to go smoke Mm. cigarettes out on the patio at night before he goes to bed, or Mm. maybe they drink a little, or maybe Mm. he's a little, he's a little too into his rotisserie baseball league, spends a lot of time, Mm. you know, drafting fairy tale players and putting them on a fake team, you know, whatever, distracted, like this, watches a little too much porn on the internet. Oh, now you lost me. Okay. (laughs) Whatever that thing is, you know, maybe she, she doesn't, you know, I come home off after a long day's work. She's in her bathrobe watching TV. There's no dinner. There's no nothing. The kitchen's a mess. She's not working. You know, I, she's not being financially responsible, like whatever it is. You have all that, right? Mm -hmm, Okay. mm -hmm. Now, if you said that can be your relationship with no cheating, Mm -hmm. just that, Mm -hmm. or would you like to have the person that is energetic, is responsible, Mm -hmm. is whatever, but they cheated once or twice or whatever? Mm -hmm. What would you take? I think a lot of people take the cheater. What would you take? I, I would take the cheater in that scenario because one is like an earthquake and the other is like right. air pollution. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> earthquake, it, it can be devastating, but you can put it right. back together. Yeah. Air pollution's just there, man. Yeah. It's just, you can't escape it. You know? Yeah. I'd take the cheating too, because there's nothing like the contempt 
that develops from, I think it's what you call low grade, like low grade offensive behavior. You know, it's just pervasive. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm, you know, it could drive you to the brink. It's like a ringing in your ear right. mm, versus something that happened and is over. Um, right. You are getting divorced after yes. 19 years. Mm-hmm. And when you and your wife came out with a statement, it was, which I'm sure you know by heart, it's not an event. It's not somebody was cheating. It's not chronic gambling or COVID. It's just two people that were really different. Why did you feel like it was important to put cheating out there first? Do you think that people expected that in your relationship because you're a celebrity couple? Oh, I don't know. I I believe I was just sort of talking off the cuff. So it okay. wasn't like I'd written it, written it down. Okay. Um, I did want to under, I did want people to understand that sometimes people get divorced because of events like mm-hmm. abuse or cheating or something physical or something, you know, what, what have you, right. Uh, that I wasn't getting divorced because of an event, mm. so to speak. You know, I was getting I divorced because we're just very different human beings and it just became sort of untenable. But, uh, you know, also, yeah, probably a, you know, I'm a dude and I'm in show business yeah. and I'd been married for a long time. And maybe people think that, oh, I'd like to be with a younger woman or I got, you know, caught, you know, I got the whatever, yeah. whatever that story is that you hear about. Yeah, the cliche. All the time. Mm-hmm. The cliche. Yes. Right. I just I wanted people to know that it was not the cliche. Okay. Do you think that most marriages end because of cheating? I also thought about that when I read your statement. I was like, well, maybe Adam thinks that that's a No, I cause. I don't think I don't think that's the reason most marriages end. Okay. You think it's I, more I, people growing apart? Oh, there's you know, lots of reasons. I, I think a lot of marriages end before they're officially over. Mm. And then sometimes people get involved with other people after it's ended, but it's yes. not officially over. And then people 100%. go, oh, you were cheating. And it's not, well, not really. It was correct. I was looking for a job after I gave my two week notice. Right. And they go, but you're still going into work. And I go, yeah, I know. But I gave my two two week week notice. I support you 100 percent on that. Yeah. It's because it's very hard to say like, okay, our long term marriage is over. Kids, family, the whole thing. Goodbye. And, you know, and just leave the next day. There is sort of a period in in between, like a purgatory where Mm -hmm. you're trying to find a way to uncouple. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, wait, before you go, I just have to, that Melissa Rivers interview. Oh, my God, Adam, when she told about how her mother's boyfriend was 85 and he had an affair. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was on the floor, tears streaming down my face. It's crazy. Tears of amusement. Yes, it was amusing. Amusing. Yeah, I I found it revelatory. Like, I was like, wow. Oh, my God. You can do this at 85 years old. Like, Oh, my God. I DM'd yeah. her. I was like, Melissa, please, come on. You got to tell this story because, I mean, only her mom, Joan, amazing, incredible comedian, could do what she did. And I don't want to say what it is just in case she comes on. But it was I was like, I think I'm going to have the retaliation episode, you know, and because what she did was hilarious, funny and deserved. I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, thanks for listening. Thanks for doing your homework. But yeah, yeah, I found that to be very interesting. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate your coming to Cheating When Love Lies. Thanks, Jillian. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for listening to Cheating When Love Lies. Please review, rate, share, continue to communicate with us. We love to hear from you.